This is Arbobot, a robot that makes objects of arbitrary size. I want something that can make a boat or a table. Arbobot does this by running around under a suspended plate and spraying foam layer by layer. Very similar to modern 3D printers, but making a quick and dirty rough structure. Current large printers are slow, and they require a big rigid robot arm that is hella expensive. I want Arbobot to be able to make things cheaply and it's okay that it's a gross format that it's printing in. So the idea is to build objects into shape and then sand it down or do whatever treatment you would do to this large foam structure. The first of the parts we'll need are our foam. So this one does one inch gaps, this one does three inch gaps. The second part we'll need is our robot, um, which is an off the shelf mechanum wheel robot. The third part we'll need is a light foam sheet for us to print onto. And we'll also need these VL53L1X distance sensors, which can measure distances up to the millimeter. I first wanted to see how the expanding foam was even going to behave, so I did some test samples. You can see that depending on my height from the cardboard, I get very different results. This is a master pie kit from High Wonder. I decided to buy an off-the-shelf robot because I didn't need to innovate on that part. Plenty of other people have made Mechanum wheel robots, so I didn't need to go reinventing it. This one was relatively cheap and had a Raspberry Pi that I could program. Next, I needed a way to attach our foam spray bottle to the robot chassis. We need what is essentially a cup holder. After I finished the design for that, I printed it out and screwed it on. A perfect fit, but how are we going to actuate the foam? By the look of this, um, it's not going to be able to reach enough to grab here and, and move any of this. So um, there just isn't enough uh, height in this controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this guy and make a 3D print so he can be mounted to uh, press on the can properly. I designed a compliant snap that will pop onto the aluminum can from the side, and it'll have just enough structure to affix our gripper. Sometimes you don't know if a part is going to fit, and uh, I just got this one off the printer, and we'll see if it clasps properly. Oh, that is satisfying. I ended up using a little template to cut out the holes and oh, safety glasses, even though it's plastic. Okay, uh, here we go. That's a fix on there, which means we can go here, here, and I put it on backwards. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of you uh, saw me putting it on backwards and were like, no, no, Adrian, don't do it. <laughs> Wow, that's a fix. That is really cool. Right. And here we have our robot gripper trying to press the nozzle so that it will release the foam. Okay, that servo's not strong enough to bend it. I finally settled on a very simple latching mechanism. There are these two slots here so I can put different amounts of pressure as I take this lever and put it in between them. So um, I have a Python parsing G-code, so we'll see if that can actually command the robot to move around. 
that didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, but uh, it, it moved based on the G-code, which is the, the great part. All right, uh, this time I have fixed the tires, which I had mistakenly put on backwards, and uh, now it should move in a square, hopefully. <sighs> Finally, all right, everything is working the way it should. This is the area I built for the printer. The cardboard walls are for the distance sensors and to catch the robot if he tries to drive off the table. You can also see the foam board I suspend above with a tripod. So this is the first real test run. I'm using the three inch gap foam because it seems to stick better upside down. There are no sensors on the robot yet, but it is executing G-code, meaning it is taking the same instructions that a normal 3D printer would and turning it into motion. In this case, we are trying to print a square. Let's watch that again in slow -mo. That wasn't actually too bad, even though it went all over the place. Uh, so uh, let, I'll show you. Let, let, let's take a look. You can see where it adhered properly because it was lower because the air pressure um, blew this side up. So there's our track and that's where everything was working. Um, unfortunately, you know, a ton got all over because I haven't been able to actuate it uh, without uh, using my, my latch. But I think that's an excellent first try. The vehicle definitely got gunked up from running through the foam. I'm Adrian Perez. I'm going to talk about what's in store for the future of this project, but before that, the STLs uh, will be up on GitHub along with the code files, and that's all accessible to my patrons. So if you'd like to join our community, we have a GitHub, please join. Every bit of support is much appreciated. And thank you very much to all my patrons. And as always, please like and subscribe. Uh, what is in store for the future? Uh, we're definitely going to activate the sensors. So on most of the video you saw, the sensors weren't mounted. And that's because once I did finally mount them, I could only get one sensor to activate at a time. And so it has something to do with the registries for the sensors themselves, uh, I suppose interfering with each other but I still haven't figured that one out. So that'll be some future video. And, uh, and then, I, yeah, so I made these extra brackets so that the sensor can be mounted here for um, uh, measurement in that direction, and then here for measurement in that direction. And that'll allow us to locate ourselves inside the box we've made. And uh, the second addition is this guy. So. Um, I did try and actuate it with the hand, the little gripper, and it just didn't provide enough force. But I'm guessing that this, uh, and I haven't tested it yet, uh, this servo is probably stronger because it's just a, a larger uh, servo than this tiny one here. So um, that one's like three times the size, two times the size. I don't know if you measure in volume. And that I'm hoping, at least it feels uh, from a just measuring hand resistance, that it might be able to pull this and start the foam going, 
which is definitely critical because I don't want the foam uh, leaking out from the top because it's just overflowing and getting all over the work surface. I've also increased the lever arm distance for, uh, for having a little bit more um, uh, mechanical advantage. So uh, the normal little lever for it stops about there and I made this 3D printed jacket that uh, then connects to our arm and hopefully we'll be able to bend it down and cause it to uh, cause it to actuate. But none of that stuff works yet. Um, it's all future stuff. This to me uh, is monumental. Like this at the, the on the face of it looks kind of pathetic, right? Like it's just a dribble here, it barely connected, and then it just lost connection all over. It this one's actually really secure here, but but like, you know, this just became a dribble in these locations as it just didn't connect. But the beginning of things always look small and pathetic. Uh, but when you get interested in the beginning of things, they start to look monumental. And, uh, and so I'm really proud of this. I think this is a great beginning to hopefully a, a very interesting invention, we'll see. I'm not necessarily treating this as a part one because I don't know if I'm going to do a part two immediately after, but we'll see. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, ciao for now. Thanks and be kind to yourself.